Today is August the 8th, 2014. My name is Tanya Fincham along with Alex Bishop. We're with Oklahoma State University and today we're in Broken Arrow to speak with Louise Starkweather and this is regarding our Oklahoma 100 Year Life Project. So thank you for having us today. Thank you. Let's start with having you tell us when and where you were born. I was born in 1912, in November the 30th, and I was born in Duquoin, Illinois. Okay. And what brought you to Oklahoma? Well, uh, his son was is building homes, and he had asked him to come to Oklahoma to help him. So I was living with him. I lived with him 14 years. They put up with me. Can you imagine that? <laughs> <laughs> so when did you move to Oklahoma? In uh, two. Eight. Eight, I believe. 2008. You haven't been here too long. Okay, well, well, we'll go back to when you were a child. Did you grow up on a farm or in, in town? In town. What did your parents do for a living? My father was a miner, coal miner, in a small town in Illinois. And he did mostly, he's a policeman sometime, but he did mostly coal mining. And your mother, did she work outside the no, home? No, the women didn't work hard at that time outside. Did you have brothers and sisters? I had two sisters and one brother. Ed, where are you in the, in the order? I was, well, I have one sister younger and one sister older. Okay. And then my brother was the oldest. And where did you go to elementary school? I went to Ducoin in the elementary school. And high school? I went to Ducoin also, also, graduated from high school. Do you remember what year? It was 1932. That was uh, during the Depression. That's what I was going to say. <laughs> do, you, do you have many stories from that time period, the oh, Depression days? I was just thinking, you know, uh, one thing, you didn't have food at the uh, fat, uh, store, or I mean at the school. You had to buy your, you had to bring your lunch or go home. You had to walk. And you walked, I lived about, I guess, about three quarters of a mile from, from school. You had to walk every place you'd ever rode. And I uh, enjoyed school. I was going to tell you, maybe you'll be interested in this. When I went to grade school, we used to, the bell would ring for recess. We called it recess. Mm -hmm. And there would be uh, for, uh, 15 minutes recess. Everybody had to get in line to march out. Of the, and you had to leave the building, go out and play, and then you had to, the building, the ring a bell again for you to come in. You had to get in line and march in. You didn't just scatter and go in. I don't know whether you knew we had to do that. <laughs> and then you didn't talk when you were in a line. You kept your mouth shut. Teachers were there to, to watch you. I thought you'd be interested in something like that. <laughs> And so you, at a young age, you would walk home for lunch? Oh, yes. That, you didn't have lunch any place unless you took it. Uh -huh. Were you usually walking by yourself or have friends? Oh, friends. You, everybody walked. You didn't. If you went to the store, you had to go. If you was going to get a lot of food, you had to take a little wagon to get your groceries because you couldn't carry them all. But, and you only went to a grocery store or a, well, it was a company store. They had, but if your miners had a company store, mm -hmm. and you could buy everything there except your a butcher shop, you couldn't buy that in a grocery store, and a baker shop, that's all you'd have. And then you'd buy everything else. And when they'd, on paydays, they'd check off what you bought at the grocery store. So country store, I remember that, and you got a sack of candy when you paid your grocery bill. And that's all the candy you had home till the next time you paid your grocery bill. <laughs> so did you hide it from your sisters? Um, did you hide the candy from your sisters? Oh, no, no. My youngest sister and I, we just practically were separ inseparable. We just, she was just with me all the time. I took her on dates and everything else. Uh -huh. <laughs> I had to take her everywhere. She didn't stay home. <laughs> If I went on a date, I took my sister. <laughs> and what about your older sister? She was different. Oh yeah, my older sister was, she was her own self. She, she worked uh, mostly when I was older. I mean, of course we all had to work we, on wash days. Now that was something on wash days. Tell us about it. 
Well, you had to draw your water out of a well when I was little. You had a gallon bucket and you draw about, oh, I'd say 10 buckets full, I mean 10 tubs full of water, and you only washed once a week. Everybody in the neighborhood washed on Monday, practically. And you had to scrub with a board on a board, and you, my mom, then you had to boil your, your uh, clothes, your white clothes. My mother was very particular. And you had to scrub them on a board after they were boiled to get every spot out of them. And you had a lot of water that you had to use out of the well, but you had to draw it all out of the well to, and put it in the thing, scrub it in the board, have a ringer that you rung, put it in the next tape, uh, tub, and rinsed it, then ring it again, and hung it on the line. If it was pretty, you hung it outside. If it was bad, you hung it inside on. The whole house was full of clothes when it was bad weather. <laughs> Well, by drawing water, what do you mean? Pumping? Or? Oh, no, we had to draw it with a bucket, a oh, gallon bucket oh, right. with, with a rope on it. We had to draw it. Mm -hmm. it's, I don't know. You and didn't, have, you didn't have to iron anything, did you? Huh? You didn't have to iron anything, did you? Oh, did I have to iron? <laughs> you had to iron on a coal stove. You know, a coal stove in right by it because you had two irons. You had one on the stove heating and the other one you were using. In the summertime, you had to iron on the, right there by the coal stove. You had no air conditioning, you had no fans, you just had to be hot, and you had to change, and you had to iron everything. My mother ironed, even ironed the dish rags, the dish towels, <laughs> and we had to iron the sheets, the pillow slips, <laughs> all your clothes, starched them so they'd stand up practically, and no wrinkles. I wasn't allowed to have any wrinkles left in any clothes either. I, I did most of the ironing for them. When I got, to, I was about 12, I think I did all the ironing for them, all my family. So I, and that was unpaid. Oh yes, we didn't have the money to pay it. <laughs> <laughs> and then I used to in high school, I did ironing and did some work for some of the school teachers to be able to make a little bit of money to go to high school. So. Well, all that work, what did you do for fun? Oh, we had fun at night after we got through eating. We called it supper then. Dinner was at noon, but we played in the outside in the dirt road. Our na the kid, neighbor kids would all come. And we'd all play until dark and play go seepy go or hide and seek or something like that. Mm -hmm. And then you didn't have grass in your yard because you had to, the kids stayed in the yard during the day. And we used to sweep the, my mother used to have us sweep the dirt if it was because you beat it down playing, you know. So we swept dirt all the time. <laughs> and then your outhouses, you didn't have an in-store bathroom. You went outside to, to go, if you had to go outside. And winter or summer, you went to the back house. And everybody had a alley behind their house, the, every street had an alley, and they would, a man would come and clean out the, stew, the toilets, hmm. and we called him the honey dipper. <laughs> <laughs> so, and that was, he did that, so you could imagine what that would be like. How many, uh, how many people would an outhouse accommodate? A, a one-seater or a two-seater? Huh? Was it a one-seater or a two-seater, the outhouse? Well, the outhouse was a, a two-seater. Why it was two-seater, I don't know. Ours was two-seater. I don't know why it was, because nobody ever came and it was two-seater. <laughs> and it was connected with a, a, the coal shed and all that the, you had to have. And, of course, ours was safe. But at Halloween, if you had one just by itself, that was Halloween time. You had to be sure and watch your toilet because kids would turn it over on Halloween time. <laughs> oh <my gosh. laughs> so we had a time. <laughs> we had a good time, but my mother never let me have. We never played cards. She didn't allow cards in the house. So, so. Dancing or, or music? We didn't have. We would, uh, I remember the first uh, photograph I heard. It was. Hall and my brother bought it and I got up on a chair 
and look in it to see that. But that was all. That was oh, I must have been about eight or nine years old when I, mm -hmm. we had the first music. That was all the music. And your lights, you didn't have electricity. We had uh, oil lamps, and you had to. You had about five, and you'd have to go in the next room. You had to carry that oil lamp. And that chimney had to be washed every morning because it would get film on it. But you just, you didn't have electricity. You had no air conditioning. You had no fans. Did everybody just, have their own bedroom? Uh, no, not really. <laughs> My sister had a bedroom. My dad, we had two bedrooms. There were six of us. And my dad worked in the day and my brother worked at night. So my mom and dad slept in the bed in the nighttime and he slept in the daytime in the bed. And then my other sister, she had her bed by herself. And my younger sister and I, we had a room where we stored things. We stored a mattress and we pulled that mattress out every night and slept put by the, in the living room and slept on that mattress. That's the only bed we had. <laughs> Because we only had two bedrooms, but and how was the house heated? By a coal stove. We had a, and it was banked at night in the kit in the front room. Uh, you'd bank the fire, so you had no heat in the house at nighttime. You had to have a lot of cover on you. But uh, and then of course in the winter time and summertime, um, you just left the windows open. You didn't have any air conditioner or anything. The only thing that you had was outside heat. <laughs> and what about bath time? Bath, well bath time you took a bath once a week and you had to take a tub behind this, in the winter time you carried the tub, number three tub, behind the, the stove in the kitchen in the front room to keep warm and you took a bath in that once a week. I said I guess we all stunk in school so we didn't know who because you only had a bath once and you only changed your underclothes about twice a week. You didn't change them, so you can imagine. <laughs> but I, I never thought of that when I was little. <laughs> did you get fresh water, or did you have to share the tub water with someone else? The water that we, you mean in the bathtub? Uh -huh. No, everybody had, we dumped the water. And Between the each water one? And stove again. To, no, at all. But, uh, and the, the drinking water, now this is something else, too. You had a gallon bucket that you drew the water from the well and the well was about from here to that back yard of ours and that was the ba the bathroom <laughs> but you drank the water out of the well and you drew it in a bucket and you put it in the uh, kitchen and you had a handle a big handle that that would hold on to the bucket and everybody drank out of that that cup you didn't have it ever. Nobody had an extra cup. You just drank out of that one cup. Everybody did. So it's, it stayed pretty healthy. Yes. Yeah. I, don't, I, was, I, I was. I never had any problem. None of us did. So. How big of a town was that? How big is Duquan? Duquan. Was, it was a pretty good sized place. It's about, it's about six. 6,500 I think now. It was a pretty good size. So I, I don't remember it changing much even when I was a kid. Mm -hmm. It's always been about that size. Yeah, we, but we were of the middle class and that's the way all the middle class lived just like we lived. They all had about the same houses and we didn't have too many people that had much money in the town. Just the doctors and the lawyers was about the only people that had any money. The rest of us were all the middle class worked in the mines. Or and you probably didn't, did you have a garden? Oh yeah, we had a garden. Uh -huh. Yeah, we had it. And my dad always, you could have your animals. We had pigs in the uh, backyard. If you wanted your animals, you had to. And if you had a horse, you had a barn with a horse in it. And we used to, my sister and I used to uh, take the little pigs and put them in the doll buggy and take them walking. <laughs> <laughs> So we used to play the little pigs like these dolls. <laughs> Dress them up. Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah, we, we had a good time, my sister and I. Did you have but, chickens? Yeah, chickens. we had chickens too. Yeah, we had pigs and chickens. Yeah, we had. In town though? In town, yeah, oh yeah, everybody had them. You could have your 
garden, you could have your animals, you could have your horses, you could have everything in town. Everybody had it. Did you have ice? Well, the ice man would come in a buggy and come by the, in the street if you wanted ice, and he'd sell you ice uh, out of his uh, buggy. And if you had ice cream cones, there'd be an ice cream man, he'd come down the street and ring a bell, and you'd go out and buy ice cream cone from him. And then your milk, you had to put your bottle on the front porch if you wanted milk, an empty bottle, and then they'd set the milk in the, with the money on the porch. We'd have the milk man would bring it in. The, that's how you got your milk and your ice and your ice cream. <laughs> You'd hear them come. And when my sister died, we had uh, we go. They'd give us a quarter. My mom would on Saturday, and we'd go to the show, mm -hmm. and it cost a dime a piece. And then we'd take the nickel and buy a pop sack of popcorn when we got home. So that's we had that once every Saturday. Do you remember your first show? I don't remember because I went to the show on Saturdays, the only time I can remember. Mm -hmm. But my first show, of course, it was all no talking. You had to just read it, you know, know what was going on. And I was. This is an odd thing. The piano player would play the piano. Would it be a storm coming up, you know? And of course, it was always Wild West stories on Saturday. That's what they were, and they were continued. So you'd want to go back the next day. And I'd go down the front of the thing and watch him play the piano because I enjoyed the, the music. And years later, that man that played that piano was my brother-in-law. <laughs> so, so, but I never will forget he used to play the piano noisy, but you had to read everything. You didn't, you didn't uh, with no sound or anything. So. Yeah, it was altogether different than it is now. <laughs> well, did you have a favorite subject when you were in high school? I liked arithmetic. Mm -hmm. I, I loved arithmetic. I hated spelling. Never, still <laughs> can't spell. <laughs> Nancy still helped me spell. <laughs> did they have home ec? Or home yes, economics? Well, I didn't take it because I didn't like home, home ec. I took science, you know, I liked science and I took science. And then when I got married, we, I needed to work, and I started a factory. And I guess I was the worst person they ever did try to teach how to sew, because I didn't know how to sew. <laughs> and I, they, oh, it was a long time I learned, had to learn. And then I ended up in a dress factory running five different companies at the time. So, <laughs> but uh, I, I worked for five different, they, they built the building uh, south of DuCoin after World War II and they, uh, uh, and I went down there, opened the doors after the war, I unlocked the door and when it closed in 202, I closed the door. Yeah, so the entire so, time. Mm -hmm. Is the building still there? Yes, but it's, they don't have anything anymore because all garments are sent overseas to I was telling them we made the last uh, garment that I worked with was bridal rituals it was made uh, bride's dresses and formals and if they made they made them they sent them they finally sent them all overseas and they'd send them back to us and if we press those garments we could take the label out and say made in the United States I know that because I moved. She was so mad about that. <laughs> <laughs> People don't know those things. No. <laughs> so you learn a lot. <laughs> oh. Yeah. Well, let's back up a little bit. So when did when did you get married? When did I get married? Mm -hmm. Right after I graduated. So in the thirties. Mm -hmm. In thirty two. And during the depression. Too. During the depression. And I had to when I got married. I had to scrub my clothes on the uh, board washboard too. And my husband was a painter. And I had to scrub all my clothes on the washboard mm -hmm. in 1932. Mm -hmm. yeah. And this is another story I don't know that you've ever heard. Uh, you know, you didn't have undertakers when I was a little girl. And the first person I ever saw that was that a dead person was a World War I soldier. And the, his 
parents lived across the street from us. And if you, anyone died, you bought the casket at the furniture store. And I don't know who put the people in the casket. I guess you had to put your own people in because you didn't have undertakers. And then they would take the person home in the casket and you, they would keep them about two days and someone had to sit up with them at night. Someone would be there at night to sit up. You didn't leave the casket. But they put a wreath on the door uh, and when you saw that, you knew someone inside was dead. And I've never been able to put a wreath on my door because it reminds me of somebody inside dead. I don't know, just that you just, but that's the way you, they did. Then. We, we just found that out because I used to put wreaths on the door, and she just yeah. I just she was just I just feel I, like I, I just don't want to put on the door. <laughs> but she told me why, and I thought okay. <laughs> <laughs> I just don't like a wreath on the door because that's the way they did, and then they put the casket on a, a, a trailer like, a, a, and the horse would draw it to the w graveyard. Mm -hmm. So it was. All dirt roads. <laughs> so, uh, speaking of dirt roads, tell them about your trip to the county fair. I went. My brother was playing in the band at the county fair, and that was 14 miles from where we lived. And the women was going to have a big dinner for the band that afternoon. And uh, in horse and buggy, we went to the fair to Paintonville, 14 miles. Took us four hours to get to Paintonville in the horse and buggy. <laughs> And my sister pressed my dad's pants, and he had grease on it. <laughs> so we had a time, but you just—it was all dirt roads to Pecknaville. So, so I've had a, a big lie. <laughs> well, how did you meet your husband? My uh, his uh, nephew. I had a date with his nephew, and. He was with his nephew, and I had to get a girlfriend for him. And when I saw him, I don't know why, I just told his girlfriend the next day, now you don't like that guy, I do. <laughs> 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 and he was bashful, he was so bashful. And so well, we had a reunion at the school, and he, I made him go to his class reunion. And this woman said to me, well, how in the world did you get him to marry you? She said, I sure tried to get him to date me, but he didn't. I, she said, did you ask him? I said, probably did. I don't remember. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I, don't, I don't remember what, whether he asked me or I asked him. <laughs> well, well, he was, what did you do to court? What kind of dates did you go on? Well, now, when I, we had a car then. Okay. So we had had the car to go on dates. But like I said, I hadn't seen my sister all the time. <laughs> she went too. And the first car you, that I can remember was a Ford Touring. And it didn't have glass windows, it just had, it was empty thing. And you'd have to turn the thing on and jump out of the car and crank it in the front. And when it started, you'd hurry and get back in the car before it died. And that's the way your car in those days. That's your house. That was the first car. If it rained, you had a leather things you could snap on the car. So I remember, I remember the first airplane I saw down on the ground. My brother took me on a bicycle over on the other side of town to see the first airplane down. <laughs> yeah, a lot of things you can remember that they didn't have. They've got everything now. You just, kids don't realize what they, what they missed, <laughs> having a good time. I mean, because they just sit now with a computer or something. They don't get out and enjoy life. Like, I think we had a lot of fun with our, with all everybody. And I don't think they do. Do you think they do? I don't think they do. <laughs> you, don't <know. laughs> you don't have a child yet. I've got four. Well, you got four? Well, you sure get out and play. She's <laughs> <laughs> good at that. <laughs> When you went on dates, did your sister have a date too? Did you double date or did she just... No, uh, she didn't have a date. She's usually... One time she had a date, was date this fellow. I was with his brother. And uh, when we got home, my mama said, I don't remember what she asked me. And I said, oh yeah, she 
He had his little brother with him. Well, his little brother was as old as he was, nearly. <laughs> <laughs> My mama didn't know that. <laughs> How? What was the age difference between you and your, your uh, sister? It was two years. Just two years. Mm -hmm. Just two years. Oh, yeah. But we were always close. My sis, younger sister, my older sister, she didn't associate with us that much. Sibling <laughs> <laughs> rivalry. She was old. She was about five years older than we were, so she thought she was always growing up, you know. So, yeah. go ahead. Oh, <clears throat> uh, when Grandpa was a policeman, and then the tri-state tornado went through Southern Illinois. You got to go see some of that. Oh yeah, I went, went to Murfreesboro. Uh, what, that it, until we had the tornado down here in uh, Oklahoma. That was one of the worst tornadoes in the United States. It was in Murfreesboro, and my dad was a policeman, and I got to go, he got to go through and see things, and we saw it. I got to go to that tornado, I saw it, tore up the houses and killed one of the, the school kids, several school kids killed that year. And then the man that his son was killed finally moved to Paytonville and run a newspaper. but. Uh, so I then we gotta go to this. We we went to see this one here. So I've seen went to Joplin. We saw that. So I so I I've, I've been around. I've been I had been in all the states of the union because my husband was a fisherman, and I got to go everywhere fishing. We went all over everywhere. We went to Canada, Mexico, all places. Camping or did you stay at hotels? Camping, camping in the in the. Kept most of the time. Later on, years but you never after. went with him in the boat, did you? No, I could. I always get sick in the boat. I don't know. I just couldn't. Well, he just went fishing, but we went all over the. One time we went to Canada on an island, and nobody was there but us and our the people that we went with, and this they'd fly in to see if we needed groceries and things. So, so I've had experience. Then I got to go to Europe. When they came back from Europe, he was doing mission work and coming back to Illinois and went with her mother and dad. And we got to go to Italy and Germany and France and all those places. Saw Patton's grave, seen Kennedy's grave. So I've worked, but I've had a good time too. I've enjoyed life and fast. Well, 60 some years at the same company is pretty impressive. What? Sixty years at the same company is pretty impressive. No, it wasn't the same company. It was the same building. They different had different companies. companies. Started out making dresses, and then that sold. They they sold out, and then then I made sportswear, and then later made uh, formals and wedding gowns. You actually sat at the machine and sewed, or well, did you I, cut out? I or? did what, what, until they put me on the floor for an instructor, and then I. Okay. Yeah, I, I sold them. And I always had a lot of patience with girls. That was good for me because I had a patience with girl, new girls. I I knew how hard it was for them to learn and and it was easier to take them and try to teach them how to learn. It was good for me to do that because I knew that they were struggling. How, go back, how did you learn to sew? How did I learn to sew? At the factory, they taught me to sew about a couple of days after I started. Did your mom, did your mother sew? My mother sewed all the time. She made all of her clothes, but I never, I didn't like sewing. Didn't like cooking. <laughs> <laughs> turned out for both of them, but turned out in the factory. But I enjoyed sewing. I uh, had a a lady that uh, had cancer, colon cancer, she said, you ought to be, you'll have to have an operation. And she said, do you make, we were making this formals. This is then you were, how old? Oh, I was, I was what, about 80 something, five, 89, 89 when I had that. And I told her, I said, she said, do you make this dress, nice garment, that formal, I'm going, I said, no, but if you get me back to work in a week, I'll get you that formal. I went back to work in a week. So then I went. I worked at La Panel, Arkansas. I started a factory down there for Bobby Brooks, and worked there for four years. 
and I had a lump in my breast and I went to the doctor and he said he could take it out. And I said, when? So he took it out in my lunch hour and I went back to work. <laughs> he took it out in his office. <laughs> so, but I don't, I, I, my pain I think is pretty high. I don't have, Here, I have yeah. pretty good tolerance. Definitely pain. high pain tolerance. <laughs> I, I've had a good, I've had a full life. The fabric changed a lot during those 60-something years too, didn't it? The, fa mm -hmm. the fabric? Oh, well, yeah, oh, yeah, that was mostly cotton then, you know, but now, of course, it, but the formals are uh, different uh, fabrics, you know, silks and satins and things, but I've worked on all kinds of fabric. Were most of your workers female? Oh, uh, nearly all, well, uh, very mm -hmm. few. We had the I'd say, well, your janitor and your uh, mechanic, and then we had about three cutters that cut the garments, and that's about all the men we had. Mm -hmm. was, uh, the rest of them was all women. And when the factory closed, I would say the women were about uh, average 50 that was working there. We couldn't get no young people there because it never was air conditioned. Mm -hmm. It was always just heat. And how did it pay the the younger girls? How much did they get paid? Uh, I think the people you mean that sold mm -hmm. I, I don't remember just five dollars an hour I believe it was something like that. Mm -hmm. Then of course it was raised as, but they didn't make a whole lot there and they worked eight hours a day at that sewing machine. I apologize to them. We have reunions every year. They I still go back to Illinois and they're going to have one for me. Uh, in October now again, and because I'm getting so old, they, they always say when they going to have a reunion. Well, is Louise coming? She, they don't think I'm still alive. <laughs> and well, I go back there every year, and they uh, we uh, oh, we just have a, a great time with. Uh, and I apologize to them for making them sit at a sewing machine and expecting them to sit there and not even get up and do it. I apologize to Because <laughs> I did expect him to do more than, you know. I had one that was, uh, we didn't have any colored people. We, they just didn't come. They didn't want to work. And uh, the main guy, main colored guy that runs, what do you call it, NAACP or whatever it is, he, he brought these two girls to the factory. And uh, one day, and he said, you don't have any colored. Why? And I said, we don't have any applications. And he said, well, these girls want to work. And I said, well, we've got a job. I can put them to work right now. So I put them to work. Well, one of them came in at noon. She says, I was going to, I'm not going to work any longer. I can't work. And I said, you don't even know whether you like to work or not. She says, I just forgot I was pregnant. <laughs> And then the other one, she went to sleep at her sewing. The instructor came to me and said, "I think she's going to pray. She's going to sore her finger." So I went to her and I said, "Do you feel bad?" She said, "I didn't want to know her. She's going to sleep." She said, well, "I don't feel very good." I said, "Well, I can give you another job." And uh, pulling sleeves, you had to the puffer had to have the sleeve right side out. When she puffed him, and I said, "All you have to do is put your hand in the sleeve, pull it out." She puts her hand, and she comes like this. I said, "You don't pull it like that. You put your hand in and pull it back out." She lasted till noon. <laughs> I've had some lot of experiences. But then you, then you, then when you went to Arkansas, you had some, you had some experiences there. Oh. You mean about the girl telling me about the Yankee? Yeah. <laughs> that's one of them. <laughs> that's one of them and in church. Because that's kind of interesting because what? in in church, when you were in the Sunday school class, how oh, you, you I went to Sunday school class, this is the way they felt about the colored people. It was terrible. I felt so sorry for the colored people because the town I lived in, Ducoin, we had colored, but they were on the other side of the railroad track, but still they were treated decent. And this little town was horrible. And I went to Sunday school. Of course, I was pretty important because I started the factory, you know, it was a little bitty town. And I was in Sunday school one Sunday. 
And this teacher said, uh, we had something about color, I don't remember now. And she said, they didn't have a soul. I said, what did you say? I said, they've got the soul just the same as you have. And I got by with it because I was from, I was important at that time. <laughs> but that's the way they felt about people. They built a swimming pool across the street from the color section. And the colored kids couldn't go in that swimming pool and, and uh, swim at all. They just couldn't watch the white people swim. They did that. They really treated them terrible. I was just, and I was in a wreck and, and smashed my nose completely. And uh, we had to hire, my mother was living with me. We had to hire a person to come to help her. And uh, I was working, I didn't miss work, but, uh, and, uh, uh, she, my mom said to this colored lady, she said, you want to sit down at lunch and eat lunch with me? She said, sit down and eat lunch. I wouldn't think of eating lunch with you. She said, if they looked in that window, they'd chase you out of town. Mm -hmm. Now that's the way they felt about it. It was terrible. Just awful the way they treated them. Just, and they couldn't shop. They had to wait till the store, all the white people quit shopping and then they could go in the stores and shop. You, can, you can't blame them for feeling the way they do sometimes. I, what time period was this? What year, years of, was this going on? This was in 59, 58, 59, mm -hmm. something like that. Mm -hmm. I went down there, when I went down to Arkansas, the secretary said to me, I'd been there about a month, and she said, I got a compliment for you, and I said, what's that? Well, you're not a damn Yankee anymore, you're just a Yankee. <laughs> <laughs> So I've had some experiences. <laughs> I've enjoyed life. <laughs> How long were you in Arkansas? Four years. Just four, and then went back to Illinois? <laughs> went back. They opened the factory. They hadn't closed the factory at that time. And so they opened it and wanted us to come back to... So I went back to Illinois then. So we was in there four years in, in Arkansas. While you were doing this, was your husband still a painter or did he switch no, jobs? he got a job. He painted the whole time. Uh -huh. yeah, he's and how many children did you have? I just had the one, two, one boy, two boys. But I was married 14 years before I had them. <laughs> you were too busy. <laughs> That's right. But when my husband came back from the World War II, he was in the service. Yeah. I said, we, if we're going to have a family, we'd better start because we were both up in the 30s. I was 34 years old. The next month, Nine months, ten months later, <laughs> I had one. Eighteen months later, I had another one. Then, but my youngest son passed away uh, last year, uh, or this year it was, uh, day after Christmas. He was uh, climbing a, a tree, deer hunting, and he built a, a deer stand, and he and his uh, grandchild, his wife's granddaughter, went with him all. She's 11 years old. He climbed up into the stand and when he got to the top, he said to this little girl, he said, I, and died. Just dropped dead then. And this little girl was there. She had to call her mother and all. They had to have a fire department to get him out of the, up there. It was terrible. It was awful. He had Agent, Agent Orange as a Vietnam veteran. Yeah, he was, but it was, it was something to, to go through. It was just a day, I, and he fixed, we'd had dinner at their house the day before. We had, I think it was about 30 people, about 30 mm -hmm. there for dinner at, uh, at, on Christmas, and he fixed the food, I mean fixed the, the Smoked the, what was it, smoked? Turkey and turkey. Smoked the turkey and all of it. Yeah. <coughs> so it was, it was a shock to all of us. So it was, but, uh, well, what, when, when your husband went to war, what did you do? When he went to work. War? Went, war. went to the service? Well, I went down when he had his um, training. That was, I just, I took off from the factory that I was there about. I don't know how long, they, several months. And I went with, with two other girls and we stayed in a little apartment room. I think it was one, two one beds or something, a little upstairs. 
I said, I'm not going to stay here. I'm going to try to find me a job. So I found a job and I worked. Well, that was, where, where, where was that? Huh? Where? 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 <coughs> where? No, Panel, Arkansas. No. I mean, we in the war during training. Where was he? In, where is that? It was Fort Tech. No. It was Texas somewhere, wasn't it? No, the training was in, in the panel, was in that area. Really? Yeah, because he, cause he could come in and eat lunch with me and all. Mm -hmm. The panel? Uh, it was in, it was in, in, the, in Arkansas? Uh-huh. No. No, 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 not that. <coughs> in uh, Texas, wasn't it? Yeah. <laughs> Texas. <laughs> uh, I think that was in Texas. Somewhere. Yeah, that was in Texas. And we went down and I got a job there and I stayed at that place. This lady was, I guess she was sick. She never came out of the bedrooms. So <laughs> well, did he have to go overseas? Yes, he was. He was the uh, first one wounded in his outfit when they uh, uh, had D-Day, you know, that, uh, went into France. And uh, he was shot through the ankle and then he was sent back to the hospital in England. He got the Purple Heart. He had the Purple Heart. Well, while he was over there, what were you doing? Well, then they, when he went back to work, when he went over uh, through training, mm -hmm. then I went back to Illinois and started working again. I just took off at the factory. That, no, I worked in them. Paid my house off while he was gone. <laughs> You're amazing. But now the house was not that big. I think what was 14,000 <laughs> in those days you could build a house for a little bit, but nowadays, but it was a small house, but I had to pay for it when he came back. So, mm. so well, I've, had a, I've had a pretty good experience in life. <laughs> Has church played in into that? In oh, that's all. I've lived in church. Oh yeah, I was in church. I I was uh, taught Sunday school class. Started teaching when I was 16 years old. Started teaching class Sunday school, and then I mm -hmm. until we moved to Arkansas, I was the superintendent of the young people's department. So I've worked in the church all my life. Yeah, I, I've enjoyed church, uh, but the factory. During the war, they sent me to do coin to open up a factory over there, and uh, it was in the church building that I was baptized in, and so we, and they had condemned that building when I was a little girl because the preacher wanted a new church, and that was the only way they could get a new church built. <laughs> and they condemned that building, and we had a factory in that building, and upstairs we even had sewing machines. And it wasn't a bad, it, that building's still there, and they still had beatings in it. So we got a new church. We had a big church there. And well, no, the, base, <coughs> the basement leaked, didn't it? Oh, that was at the, uh, yeah, that was, uh, that was at, at Tateneville. I lived across the street from the, the church, and uh, I taught in the department. I was always doing something in the church. and. Uh, uh, I went to church that morning. I always opened up my department room and all, and I smelled smoke. And the church was downstairs was burning, and I ran over and called the fire department. And we were standing in the parsonage. A friend of mine, uh, and she was crying. She said, "I don't know why I'm crying because I hope it burns down and we get a new church." <laughs> but uh, then I, one time I had to start the boiler in the basement of the church. I mean of the building, and oil would leak out of the boiler all morning, and then, of course, I didn't, I was always careful, but I dropped the match in this oil, and it caught on fire, and the girls were upstairs, and I run, and I threw water on it, and they said, you weren't supposed to put, put that water, put that fire out, I don't know how come that water put the fire out, but it did. <laughs> and then one time, we had a boiler in the basement, with a furnace, they had a, they had the thing down in the hole. The stoker was down in the hole, and it would uh, when it would rain, water would get in the stoker, get in the floor. And you had to keep the water dipped out of the floor. And one night, about nine o'clock, the janitor calls me. He says, "You're going to have to come on dip this water because I'm tired of dipping water." And I had to go and dip water all night to keep the water out. <laughs> 
So I've had some experience. <laughs> I don't think anybody's had much work. <laughs> I've worked 65 years in a garment factory. Mm -hmm. so. Well, when you were doing it in the church, what were, the, what were you sewing? What was being made? The garments? What were you making? In the church, mm -hmm. we were making just dresses at that dresses. time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And one time a girl, we had to, she uh, started to turn her iron off and got home and was going, we, she would have died if we hadn't, and they run and pull the plug, but that was an awful thing too. Then I had in Ar Arkansas, a girl died eat, at her lunch thing, so, so I, I'm going through it. <laughs> well, did you make your own clothes then? Oh yeah, afterwards. Did you? Yeah. I sold for everybody then. Mm -hmm. I made her wedding gown and her daughter-in-law's wedding gown. Oh yeah, I sold. And you said you didn't like cooking. Have you have you developed that talent too? Oh, I cook now. Oh yeah, I cook now. <laughs> but I have to have a recipe for everything. <laughs> <laughs> I told them. I told them that. They, when they, I, my husband died, and I said, "Now, I not." They said, "Come and live with us." And so I said, "Well, I'll do that." I didn't want to live with myself. I said, "I'll come on two things: I do the cooking and I do the washing. And if I can't do that, I'm not going to move in." So I do. I still do the washing and the cooking. She has to ask me if she can wash <laughs> or, or cook. Or cook. <laughs> Cook or anything. I, got, I, got, I got to make macaroni and cheese. Like but she's it. good at she's good. She takes she sure takes a lot from a the dole. <laughs> They're a lot of fun. We just have a ball. We we really enjoy life. We well, you tell, tell them what we do during the day. Oh well, yeah, we watch game shows so we can keep our minds going, you know, the questions and then try to answer the questions before they're on there. So we watch that all the time to keep our minds. Cool. Yeah, somebody asked me the other day, they said, do you watch game shows and you like the prices right? She says, I don't like anything unless you're going to learn something from it. <laughs> she says, I don't learn anything from it. Well, you've got to keep your mind alert. Well, while we're on that topic, describe a typical day for you now. My what? A typical day for you What now. time you now. get up from the time oh. of your early arrival. <laughs> I get up at 4.30 and start the... I put his water in the refrigerator so it'll freeze. So I put it in his lunch bucket. Then I get his lunch bucket ready and then I get breakfast ready and then I go back to bed. And then at seven o'clock he gets up, we eat breakfast. <laughs> yeah. And then what? Take us through the rest of your day. Well, the rest of our day, we don't have it too hard. She does all the housework. <laughs> you, you sit and watch. Huh? <laughs> she, she does all that. I don't do any housework. She does all that. I, she, but I do make her tell me if she wants to wash in the washing machine. She has to ask, get permission. So you feed me breakfast before I go out the door. Then what? Then I go back to bed. <laughs> and then you get up at what time? About 10.30. <laughs> I go back to bed, then after after he leaves, then I go back to bed. <laughs> and she, uh, I go out to get the mail, and she likes to do all of the, uh, the book work. She, she does that. She, yeah, I said, I, I don't, it's not nosy, I don't care that, I, but I want to keep my mind. So I keep track of all their bills, and. Tell them when they have to pay them and how much and all. I've got a list of that. I've got a good list. <laughs> <laughs> you guys are going to get us for elder if you taking advantage of her. <laughs> no, no, I want to do it or I wouldn't do it. It wouldn't make me do it. I just, I don't want to be busy. She's her own person, and I, I love that about her. She, I don't want, I don't want to just sit around. No use of living if you're just going to die. <laughs> So, so what time do you actually go to bed at night then? Oh, I go to bed right after Will of Fortune at night, <laughs> 7 o'clock. But then we get up after they watch the show that they want to watch, maybe uh, it's anything they want to watch, then they come and get me up and we play Uno. And then <laughs> and we have a treat. And then I go back to bed about 10.30. <laughs> oh, <my God. laughs> 
she, she holds the all-time all high record in the game. That was just two nights ago. We, we have a was. oh, we have a ball play. Do you ever play Uno? Uh -huh. Oh, we love Uno. Not every night, though. <laughs> We just have a ball with Ludo. It's, uh, never know. That's one game you don't have to be smart because you. It's just whatever you Are get. You, you have all kinds of <laughs> ways. <laughs> She's got her plan. But then, and she but, goes after, but then after Uno, the next question is, what are we going to have for treat? <laughs> yeah, after we play Uno, we have a treat. I go back to bed at about ten thirty. <laughs> I go to bed at seven, then I get up about oh, it's about nine, isn't it? Usually what do you typically nine. have for a treat? <laughs> Usually ice cream or yogurt or something like that. <laughs> uh, yeah, we we always have a treat before I go back to bed. <laughs> and people ask her about her eating habits. You know how she stays healthy. You can tell them what you your eating habits. That you've had ever since you were a little girl. Oh, you mean I eat apple? Uh -huh. Oh yeah, apple. I think apples was help helped me. I ate apple a day. My my folks when I was a little girl, they'd even buy bushes of apples, and I had I never missed a day of eating an apple, never. But then, what else do you eat besides apples that you really really like? That when we go to Sam's, you got big requests. For what you really candy. Candy. <laughs> <laughs> That's candy. She loves candy. I love candy and apples. <laughs> What's your apple of choice? What what apple do you like the best? Any of them. Any of them? Don't I, have a favorite? I, I know I don't have any. Just I like an apple. And I've always eaten an apple. And I've got all but five of my teeth, my own teeth. So I think that's why. Never owned a toothbrush until I was married. <laughs> Never had my teeth cleaned but twice in my life. And they said that you ought to have them cleaned after you have a child. So after each one of the children, I had my teeth cleaned. <laughs> we wanted, we really wanted her to get, you know, to get her teeth fixed and everything. She goes, that's a waste of money. Look how old I am. She said, <laughs> I had a loose one. I had a call to see how much it cost. I think it was $35 to have it pulled. I thought, well, I'm not going to pay that. I'll pull my own tooth. So I pulled my own tooth. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> I pulled it myself. <laughs> uh, yes. So do you take after your mother or your father with all of this well, determination? I don't, I don't know. My mother was sick most of her life. I, but she made us work, which was good. I always thought I was abused, but I'm sure glad she made me do it. She, she, we, we had to do all, nearly all the work. We had to dust everything before we went to school, and she was everything had to be so so. And we had to wash the dishes. When we got up from the table, the dishes had to be washed in a wash pan, and you had to wash them before you went to school. So if you run to school, that was their fault, not hers. <laughs> yeah. And of course, they, in those days, everybody got up and or they, you all ate at the same time at the table. You, she met, uh, fixed biscuits for my dad every morning and biscuits and gravy. But all of us had to get up and eat at the same time. We didn't. And then you had to be there for, we call it supper then, but now they call it dinner. <laughs> <laughs> and noon is dinner. Now it's lunch. <laughs> that frustrates her. <laughs> well, did you ever think you would live to be a hundred? Oh no, I didn't dream I'd live to be a hundred. <laughs> I didn't. But now my mother was ninety-two when she died. So, but my dad was seventy-six, and he never was at work. Was sick a day in his life. I don't ever remember my dad being sick. And my mom was. She had all kind of problems. And she lived to be 92. Mm. So. How did you celebrate your 100th? Well, the church had uh, my Sunday school class. They, I, I go to a class. When we came here, we met a lady, and she took me to this class. Well, they're younger than I am. I could heal younger than I am. So I tell them I ought to go to an older class, but they said, no, just stay in that class. 
So they, they had a birthday cake for me in my Sunday school class. They had a birthday cake and they sang happy birthday, gave me a big, big birthday a big bouquet of roses. And so I, and the preacher, he uh, nominated, he told in the church that how old it was and <laughs> I had a big celebration. <laughs> Now you have a fried chicken recipe in here. Did you have Sunday dinner, or you? Used to always fix fried chicken for noon. After church, I'd go home and fried chicken. Have all my, you know, for years I fried chicken after yeah. church while we were all. These but I always go to home. church. Never miss church on Sunday, and we still I still go all the time. I she fell. She fell on. Uh, what was it? On a Sunday two two weeks ago, and then she. Went to uh, went to church the next Sunday and and that at that time I guess we weren't sure if a rib was broken or mm -hmm. not and so they said uh, she said oh I fell I think maybe I might have broke my rib but I'm not sure and they said and you are here <laughs> <laughs> so she's inspiring to yeah. me I well, know people I don't like to miss church. I'd say you don't like to bitch much. You don't like to no, miss much. No, that's, that's it. <laughs> we go to, it takes us about eight to nine hours to go to Illinois, you know, where we live. And we, I go there every time they go to Illinois. We try, go in the car. So, but, so we, I, I don't stay home. <laughs> so do you have a motto or philosophy you live by? Just keep going, make yourself go whether you want to or not. Because a lot of times I haven't felt like going, but I went. Because I think you just have to make yourself. Don't you think so? Mm -hmm. You've got to be determined to, I ain't going to get down. <laughs> <laughs> Might miss something. <laughs> you don't want to miss out. <laughs> no, I don't want to miss out on anything. No, but you know, I love people. I just really enjoy people, and I think that's a whole lot of it too. I don't care what color they are; don't make that don't make any difference to me what color person is, because they've all they're all just like me, except their skin's a little bit different color. But I just I like to be, and I think that helps too. Is I just I just like people. What were holidays like when you were a little girl? Like well, Christmas, Thanksgiving, July Fourth. Well, yeah, we all at Christmas time. You only got one gift, though. You only you didn't get a whole bunch of gifts like that. You either got a doll or a doll buggy or something like that at Christmas time. But uh, but nowadays you and what would your mother usually cook? I but my mom cooked an awful lot of all the time. I I don't remember now. I guess we had turkey. I don't remember. She we always celebrate all the holidays. And, but, uh, and my, my, my mom fried chicken every Sunday. She always had chicken for everybody. Was it Sunday. chickens that you had in your yard? Huh? Was it the chickens that you had in your yard that you ate? No, we had to go out and, and get, we'd go out in the, well, then, then in those, those days, you had to go out in the farm and get your chicken and bring it in and cut its head off. And then you scalded it and pulled the feathers. And that's how you had fried chicken. <laughs> so, I thought we had fried chicken when I was a kid. I remember being <clears throat> at your house and I was totally, couldn't believe it. I thought, what? What are you doing? <laughs> it was awful. <laughs> Back there when it cut, up, cut, up, cut up your own chicken too? Yeah. But that's, that's not done much anymore. No, huh? No. Would you do a pulley bone, the wishbone? Yeah, well, no, I hardly ever do that. I just, <laughs> but uh, yeah, you can even buy them now. You don't have to do all that work. <laughs> doesn't taste the same though, does it? Well, does it taste as not, good? Yeah, it's about as good. <laughs> but uh, I know the grandkids; they all want to know how to fry the chicken, and I fried chicken, showed them, and her son, their son, he come and said, I want you to, I'm going to fry the chicken and you stand and watch me and tell me what to do. So he, so he fries chicken now too. So. Well, do you remember voting for the first time? No, I don't remember voting for the first time. Okay. I remember voting in Arkansas. I knew this was coming. <laughs> that was something else, that Arkansas voting. It was something else in 59. You 
sit down at a long table and a man's behind you looking, seeing how you're voting. And I voted for somebody. I didn't know who to vote for, really. I was just voting to be voting because they told me to vote. And he, I voted for somebody and he said, well, you don't want to vote for that person. And I said, well, why, if I mark my ballot, it'll be no good. Oh, no, just mark it out. That's all right. And that's the way they voted. So I told them that I'll furnish the material, the factory will furnish the material if you build little shelters so you can go in. That wasn't, that they didn't do that. So then when we were leaving, just before we left, they were voting again, and they said to me to go down and vote. And I didn't go till late, and my husband said, be sure and go vote. He hadn't got there yet. And they said, is your husband not coming to vote? I said, well, yeah, he told me that he'd be here. Well, he might not come. Here's his ballot. You vote for him. He came in about that time, but that's the way they voted in Arkansas. <laughs> <laughs> I was there. I know. <laughs> but I told him, I'm, I'm, I'll so furnish the material if you'll let him go. But they didn't. You sit at a table, and they go over and look and see how you're voting. So it was, it was something. <laughs> that was in 59. Mm. I don't know how they do it now. <laughs> she still vote? You still vote. Probably do. Probably vote that way. It was a little tired. Oh, they're talking about Arkansas. They're still doing that. <laughs> Probably not. <laughs> when, I, when I was booing down there, I said, now, we had sleds for the kids, and we make snowman and all, you know, in the, we had enough snow in Arkansas, I mean in Illinois. And they said, oh no, we don't have any snow, so you uh, don't need to bring your sled. So we, I don't know whether I sold them, gave them away or anything. Anyway, I didn't take them. That winter we went in Arkansas, they had the deep snow. We even made a snowman. They made a snowman <laughs> that first year we were in Arkansas. <laughs> said, do you have cyclones? You know, we had cyclones in Illinois. Oh no, we don't have, uh, I don't recall any. They had a cyclone about half a mile from us, wasn't it? Tore up a whole lot of Mexican houses and all. And they had a cyclone. I don't know whether I took it there or what. <laughs> but anyway, we had a cyclone one time. We were at the factory I worked at. For tornadoes. And uh, they uh, uh, the, the told us of a tornado was coming, you know, to watch. So we let all the people go home. But I was uh, time, fixing the time cards, and the janitor and I just went into the hall and was, walked out the door to see what was coming at us. We look, and we see this thing going down and coming back up and going down. And it was coming our way, and it was right in our direction. And I, we lost it. I said, where did it go? He said, I don't know. It was across the road tearing up all those trees, just twisting them all out of the thing. That, and it uh, went up over the factory, dropped back down after it went over the factory. <laughs> but I was in it, <laughs> watched it coming, and didn't know what to do, because there wasn't anything you could do well, then, because it was at you. <laughs> now that one in Murfreesboro, you said, that, oh. did, nobody knew that was coming, did they? No, I don't think not that I know that that was, state Oh, that was before they had the radio or television. television. I remember my yeah. first television. There was no, nothing to say, but that I can't imagine. No. Yeah. Oh, it tore up Murfreesboro. Well, they said people. It was horrible. I think it tore up practically all of Murfreesboro. It was, it went. That it was on ground. How long was it? Well, two or three states. Yeah. Yeah. But it didn't matter. Tornadoes and everything else. <laughs> we got to remember the tornado we had around here. That was interesting. They all been in bed, and they said that a tornado is coming. I mean, we saw. You've got to get up and dress. Right we're going out and run it. And so I had to get up and put my clothes on. We went. Fred went north because he knew this tornado was coming. I told her. I said, "It's right here. It was, I've got to get my clothes on." You look fine. Let's just get out of here. I'm anyway, putting my clothes on. We went north and we missed it. When we get back here on this road, it is 51 right out here. You can. It just tore one of the uh, 
filling stations tore it up, just drawn that, just a few miles from us here. And we, we got back on the highway. We didn't know whether there was a police at that intersection, everything. Well, we didn't know whether we had a house to go to when we got over here. But didn't touch anything here, but tore it up about it on that highway. There. Blocks away. So, we're just lucky. <laughs> Taking up all your time. No, well, when history is written, what, what do you want it to say about you? About me? Mm -hmm. Well, I don't care what you say. <laughs> <laughs> say she's crazy. <laughs> you can just say, enjoy life. <laughs> keep going. <laughs> yeah, just just keep on going. Enjoy people like people. I think that's one of the main things in life is not thinking you're better than anybody else. I, I don't you think that is important? Because I, I always, I never felt like I had authority, but I never felt like I needed any more than the janitor or the mechanic or anybody else because you have to have all them, same as you have to have somebody run it. So I never felt like I was any, any more important than the people that work for me. Because all people that want to work are good people, <laughs> lazy people. <laughs> <laughs> well, I hope we're not in that category. <laughs> <laughs> well, anything else you want to add before we shut it off? I think I've, I think I've added the back. <laughs> you, you've been great. Thank you very much. I think I've said. Took up too much of your time. No, you've been great. Thank you.